Welcome to Truth Africa series, unapologetic and truthful. I am your host, Yemi Melikaya. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, a year ago, we saw a barbaric and brutal death of the head of state of Libya. A representative of his country, a member of the African Union. The, that death occurred in the context in which NATO was operating supposedly in order to protect civilians. As we, in spirit, join the United States in condemning that death, shall the United States also join us in condemning that barbaric death of the head of state of Libya, Gaddafi. It was a loss, a great loss to Africa, a tragic loss to Africa occurring in circumstances in which NATO had sought the authority of the United Nations Security Council under Chapter 7 to operate in Libya in protection of civilians who were said to be at the mercy of the government of Libya led by Colonel Gaddafi. The mission was strictly to protect civilians, but it turned out that there was a hunt, a brutal hunt of Gaddafi and his family. And Gaddafi and his family we sought NATO caught up with them. They suffered the brutal deaths that we know about Gaddafi and some of these children. And as the United States spoke, I'm sure they were aware also that they were a NATO power. That they alongside other NATO powers had had the authority under Chapter 7 to operate in protection in Libya in protection of civilians. But did it turn out to be that? In a very dishonest manner, we saw Chapter 7, the authority given at, up under Chapter 7, being used now as a weapon to rout a whole family, to commit the murders that occurred in the country. Bombs were th thrust, were thrown about in a callous manner, and quite a good many civilians died. Was that the protection that they had sought under Chapter 7 of the Charter? So, the death of Gaddafi must be seen as in the same tragic manner as the death of Chris Stevens. We condemn both of them. Let me begin by reaffirming the rightful and important role of the United Nations in the management of issues affecting international peace and security in the quest for a more just and equitable international order 
Zimbabwe remains strongly opposed to unilateralism and is committed to multilateralism. We therefore would like to see a United Nations that continues to be a guarantor of world peace and security and a bulwark in the fight for justice and equality among nations. It behoves us all, therefore, to take the necessary steps to ensure that the United Nations is not marginalized on international issues. Equally important, the United Nations must in future never allow itself to be abused as it was in the case I've referred to where NATO sought under Chapter 7 authority to protect civilians and nay, it did not turn to be that. Nations must in future never allow itself to be abused. The United Nations Security Council must never in future allow itself to be abused by any member state or group of states that seeks to achieve parochial partisan goals. The Charter of the United Nations clearly stipulates that it is as an international body that should work for the good of all the peoples of the world, big and small. Mr. President, we recognize that there are existing and emerging threats and challenges that continue to frustrate our individual and collective efforts to attain greater economic development and social progress, as well as peace and security. But the increasing trend by the NATO states inspired by the arrogant belief that they are the most powerful among us, which has demonstrated itself through their recent resort to unilateralism and military hegemony in Libya, is the very antithesis of the basic principles of the United Nations. In that case of Libya, the African Union and its peacemaking role was defied, ignored and humiliated. The African Union was for dialogue between the Libyan Authority and the so-called revolutionaries. Robert Mugabe, born in 1924, is Southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, emerged as a key figure in the country's struggle for independence. His early political career was marked by activism against British colonial rule and the white minority government. In 1980, he became the first Prime Minister of the newly independent Zimbabwe. During his early years in power, Mugabe implemented policies that aimed at improving education, health care, and land distribution. His government achieved notable successes, including a significant increase in literacy rates and improvement in health care accessibility. However, Mugabe's legacy is marred by controversies, particularly in the early 2000s. His controversial land reforms policy, which involved seizing white-owned commercial farms, led to economic instability and food shortages. This period saw a decline in international relations and condemnation from various quarters. As his presidency continued, Mugabe faced criticism for alleged human rights abuses, electoral fraud, and the suppression of political opposition. The once-respected liberation leader was now under scrutiny for his authoritarian rule and the decline of democracy institutions in Zimbabwe. Robert Mugabe's legacy is undoubtedly complex and multifaceted. While he played a pivotal role in the liberation of Zimbabwe, his later years were marked by controversial policies and actions. It is essential to recognize both the positive and negative aspect of his leadership and understand the broader context in which he operated. The story of Robert Mugabe is one of the liberation hero turned controversial leader. By examining his life and legacy critically, we can gain insight into the complexity of post-colonial African leadership. What are your thoughts on Mugabe's legacy? Let us know in the comments below. And there you have it guys, kindly share your opinion in the comment box below and do not forget to like this video so YouTube can share this video with more people like you. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.